More than 13,000 people die each year due to speeding, and for Lewis, the issue hits close to home. This uh, drizzling is going to continue throughout the morning, and this is all thanks to this low pressure system just off the coast here, and that's what's bringing in this onshore flow. Picking up dog poop at the local dog park is becoming an increasing problem. But it's as simple as throwing it away in the trash. It was very hot this weekend, and what a better way to cool off than here at McMurtry Aquatic Pool. I've got my shoes off, I got my feet in the water. It's so nice out here, and it's a great way to cool off because we are expecting record heat this weekend. When Gypsy escaped the next morning, they had no idea that seven puppies were also missing. Neighbors tell us they couldn't get anybody to come out here and rescue this furry feline from this tree for nearly two weeks, so they called us and we took action. Most of the rain and even some snow falling in the Sierra Nevadas. A little bit here in Bakersfield as we take a closer look at the radar. And congratulations. And the teachers that will be chosen will represent Kern County in the California Teacher of the Year ceremony in November. Todd Jackie, back to you in the studio. It is starting to rain out here and the dark clouds are beginning to roll in. But the good news is that the grapevine is still open right now. However, I don't expect it to last throughout the night because the National Weather Service did issue a winter storm warning. If the proposed those budget cuts are approved, you'll begin to notice things in our public parks like overfilled trash cans, dirtier public bathrooms, and even delays in mowing the grass. Delano police say this is one of the many parks they patrol for suspicious activities, but residents say it's not enough to keep these kids safe. Hail, high winds, and a lot of thunderstorms and rain didn't stop Lake Isabella residents from enjoying the view. Truck tailgates can be removed in seconds and can be sold for over $1,000. If you don't have a blanket to cover your plants, you can use something like cloud cover, pour the concentrate in a spray bottle, and you're done. Wednesday, the storm begins to move in this afternoon. That clears out. Thursday, we get a little break, and then the Friday storm begins to move in by the morning, and that lasts throughout the entire weekend, like I said, going to keep us very uh, wet out there. The roads are going to be very slick and very gusty winds. We're also expecting almost a foot of snow in the Sierras near uh, Yosemite and all the way through Tahoe, so that's going to be pretty great, and the snow levels will be about 6,500 feet this weekend. We are also going to be in a high wind watch until Friday at 4 p.m., gusts up to 70 miles per hour over the grapevine, so please take caution if you are traveling. Air quality is moderate today, but we will still stay in the 70s. It's going to not drop us down that much as far as our temperatures go. 74 in Wasco and 70 in Delano. Overnight lows in the 50s. Also up in the mountains, expect those breezy conditions today. 59 in Tehachapi, 66 in Glenville, and 67 in Lake Isabella. And also down in the deserts, it's looking pretty nice. 75 degrees in California City. Also, the next seven days, real quick, it is going to be very intense out there. 100% chance of rain on Friday with a chance for some thunderstorms lasting all all the way through Sunday. Overnight lows staying just above freezing, so it looks like we won't see too much snow up in the uh, high country as well. Let's take a look outside in your traffic now. Nothing out there to slow you down this morning. However, like I said, that blowing dust will be an issue beginning this afternoon, so please take caution, especially over the passes. Back to you, Mike and Aaron. From farmers, the, this year and the year before, are back to back droughts. To cattle ranchers, it's devastating. Everyone is feeling the heat from one of the driest years on record for rainfall that leads to paying more at the store. We're looking at losing about half of our herd this year uh, because of the last few years, actually, of how bad the drought's been. Jack Lavers, president of the Kern County Cattle Association and a sixth generation cattle rancher, says his family business has not seen anything like this since the 1800s, and the problem is the grass. Well, normally this time of year, you're going to walk out here. This is kind of a little bit of a meadow ground, mm -hmm. and it generally is about a foot deep. Uh, even this time of year, it's starting to get thinner this time of year, but we're generally getting rains and we're starting to get new growth underneath it. Labor says it's so bad he's forced to feed his cattle hay instead of grass, which can lead to health concerns, weight loss, and trouble breeding. The cattle here at Laver's Ranch are barely hanging on with no rainfall this year, which means when they get here, it'll cost you more for your favorite piece of beef. Uh, it's costing the feeder a lot more, the consumer a lot more, and uh, it's, uh, it's making margins a lot tighter for sure. Next stop for the cows is here at Western Stockman's Market in McFarland, where they are put up for auction to be sold. It's also where manager Justin Mabin is pinching pennies for a not-so-rainy day. Last time that our numbers were this short in the United States was in the 50s. And uh, you think about the way that, you know, population has expanded since the 50s. Uh, so, yeah, very, very short on cattle. And less cattle on the fields means less money in your wallet. Our, our cow numbers are way, way down. And it, what you'll see for the consumer is an inflated price. In Glenville, Leah Steinberg.
23 ABC. Good morning, Lindsay. Yeah, if you want to read a book by the pool, I would definitely recommend today because we're going to see the hottest day of 2014 so far starting today. How about that? Live from downtown Bakersfield, it is a gorgeous morning. We're currently sitting at 55 degrees, so a little bit on the mild side right now, but don't let it fool you. It definitely will heat up as soon as the sun rises. Humidity sitting at 55%. Right now, we are seeing mild temperatures as well. 34 in Tehachapi, 44 in Edwards Air Force Base, and also mid-40s up near Porterville. Wind speeds luckily are dead calm right now, especially in Bear Valley and in Tehachapi. Just a light breeze for us here in the valley and three miles per hour in Lebec as well. So as you can see from our Pacific storms map. We're checking out these clouds just off the coast, but as you can see, this ridge of high pressure is keeping everything to our north and keeping most of the state very, very clear and toasty today. We're going to stay about 15 degrees above average today. We're forecasting a high of 86 degrees, just a few degrees off from the record of 91 set back in 1972. So be prepared to uh, bring out the SBF by the afternoon. Also, tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day. We're expecting a high of 77 degrees, so also very warm for this time of year. It should be nice if you want to sport your green out there. Also, air quality is in the moderate range today, and we will see mid to upper 80s today. Like I said, it's going to be a warm one around the valley today. Overnight low staying in the low 50s. Also up in the mountains, clear skies is what we're expecting today as well. 76 in Glenville, 81 in Lake Isabella, and also 73 in Tehachapi. And finally, down in the deserts, like I said, bring out the sunscreen and hats today, hitting 90 degrees in California City. Is it spring yet or is it summer? It definitely doesn't feel like it. Well, spring is definitely here almost by Thursday. We'll see 75 degrees on the first day of spring here in Bakersfield and staying pretty much in the upper 70s all week with overnight lows in the low 50s. The Kern River forecast, we're seeing 83 degrees to start at the work week on St. Patrick's Day with a little bit of a breeze at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. 74 on the first day of spring as well, overnight lows in the mid-40s. And finally up in the mountains, 65 on Monday. Staying pretty consistent this week with mostly clear skies, overnight lows in the upper 30s. Lindsay, it's going to be a good one. Tailgate theft is quicker and easier than ever. Oh, I was, I was angry. I can't believe somebody would just do that. And for Delano resident Brian Delormente, he didn't realize it until he watched his own surveillance video that proved it. It looked, seemed way too easy. But now that I look at it, I see there's really nothing holding it. You couldn't, anybody can just take it right off. Delano police say it's been an ongoing problem for years. Just over the past 10 years, we've had over 60 just with our agency reported. Truck tailgates can be removed in seconds and can be sold for over $1,000. Richard Hooser with California Truck shows us how easy it is to steal one. But the good news, there's an easy fix. Simple two, three dollar tool. It's a hose clamp. I think this is a three quarter inch to a one three quarter inch. There's also many other products on the market that can deter from getting yours stolen. It just costs so much to replace a tailgate. You can spend $60, $25 to put a simple lock on it and then you don't have to worry about someone stealing it. Something Brian wished he knew about before it was too late. Uh, yeah, I probably will replace it, and then I will definitely get a lock for it also. Leah Steinberg, 23 ABC.